Hey there, this is Jeff Escalante from Carrier Creative, and I'm here to give a quick demo of our new static site generator Spike, along with Netlify, which work extremely well together. I'm super excited to do this demo just because I just released a new version of Spike. It's getting very close to public release, and we're really excited about the possibilities that come with this static site generator, and super excited to share it first with uh, Netlify's audience. So let's get right into it. Um, essentially, Spike is a static site generator that is built on uh, a unique premise, which is that the core of it is three different projects that are simply foundations for plugins. Um, and so we have for CSS, post-CSS, which surely you've heard of, um, for HTML, there's a new project called Reshape that I've been working super hard on for the past couple of months. Uh, it just came out recently, and uh, we're really excited to debut it here with the new version of Spike. It can be used with any project, um, but we wanted to make sure that users have the same flexibility with plugins that they do with PostCSS and Babel for JavaScript um, as they do for HTML. And so. Reshape was made for that purpose, and we'll see a little bit more about it uh, pretty soon once we start diving into the project structure. Um, so let's uh, get it installed and fire up a new project because the best way to learn is by actually seeing what happens. So first to use it, you'll have to install it with npm install spike uh, flag g. I have already done this, so uh, I'm going to spare you the pain of waiting for npm to run its lengthy install process, um, but that will install the tool for you when you need to. Um, you can see that I am on version 0.11, which was just released uh, less than an hour ago, so we're really uh, going in fresh here to this demo. Um, so let's fire up a new site and do spike new, and uh, I'll just call this project example. And it will just ask you a couple of questions. Um, name my project, let's call this Spike Example, and uh, my great project, and this is my GitHub username, and yeah, I'll take a production config file because we are planning on deploying this to production. Um, so now it will go ahead and install the dependencies, which takes a moment. Okay, and it has just finished up. That does take uh, a couple of minutes in real life, unfortunately. So you can feel free to go grab a coffee or drink uh, during that process. But luckily we have the magical power of video editing. So that happened actually pretty quickly. So let's just jump right into the example project and we're gonna open it up and see what this is all about. All right. Uh, here we are in our text editor, so I'm just going to give a very brief tour of what this file structure looks like and uh, an overview of some of the files here. So we'll start it off with the app.js file, which is the primary configuration. Um, and as you can see here, this is a fairly simple config. We have reshape for HTML processing, we have post-CSS for the CSS processing, and we have Babel here for our JavaScript processing. Um, other than that, a very small amount of configuration, just a couple of files to be ignored from the compile process, a couple of custom extensions, and we are asking it for source maps. Up here is just the libraries that we require as part of our standard stack. Um, as far as what we're actually using for the stack, we have some pretty detailed documentation on that uh, for HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. There is full explanation of each piece of the stack, why we chose to use it, and a couple of examples of how to use it. Um, so everything can be super clear for people coming in that are unfamiliar with some of these tools. So feel free to check out this spike standard section if you want to learn more about our default stack, but I will not bore you with that right now. Um, we'll just jump into some of the views here. Uh, you can see we have a layout and index, very basic. Uh, this is a very Jade-like syntax if you've ever used Jade before. Um, this is a .sml extension. It stands for Sugar Markup Language. 
It's essentially a plugin for reshape that gives you a white space based HTML parser. Um, you can see also that we have some blocks to be used for the layout. Um, and in here we extend the layout. Uh, again, very similar to Jade, inspired by Jade. However, this is completely implemented through uh, small uh, plugins that just have one specific purpose. And so this could be used, for example, without the white space HTML parser and just with straight HTML, you would keep all the functionality, you still get the extends, the blocks, you still get markdown parsing, you still get local variables. Um, everything here you can, you can use or not use just based on the individual feature, which makes it a lot more flexible and um, a lot easier to understand and contribute to for individual developers. So we're very excited about that. Um, up here in the assets, we have our CSS, JavaScript, and images. Um, you can see we are also using uh, Sugar SS here, which is uh, an equivalent for post CSS, which gives you a simpler syntax without the extra semicolons and brackets and uses indentation instead to figure out what's nested. So just the most basic styles here um, and an example of how you can import multiple style sheets into a main style sheet, which is what we recommend. Uh, JavaScript, uh, nothing special. We've got full ES6 capabilities here because of Babel um, and you can write it as you wish. So with that brief tour of the source, uh, I'm just going to fire this up and we can run spike watch to have it uh, compile the project and then watch all of our source files uh, and open it up in the browser as we can see here. So everything has resolved correctly. Um, you can see as an example that our HTML here resolved. We had a local variable contained in this handlebar syntax and that resolved. The markdown was parsed and these quotes and dashes were converted into smart typography. And here, of course, is a handy reference for any of the foundational projects that we use to build it out and a reference for the app.js file as well. We can also see here that it created a public folder. This is where our full source goes. So you can see the straight HTML, uh, the CSS and the JavaScript in here. Very nice, clean structure. Um, and it's clear where everything is going and how your output looks at all times. Um, also, since we're watching the project, I'll just pull this over and make a couple of changes so that we can see what happens. It will just, as soon as I save, recompile that specific file and it will reload the site. This all happens fairly quickly. Uh, you can see your compile times up here in the corner. Uh, they're less than one tenth of a second, so pretty good. We also have a external IP address that we can use to access this page from any other device. Makes it very easy to test and debug on mobile devices um, and other things of that nature. So now that we are all set with our proof of concept here, I'm gonna close out the watcher and we're gonna get this ready to deploy to Netlify. Um, so in GitHub, I'm just going to make a new repository. There we go, and we'll create it. In here, uh, I'm going to start installing Spike itself as a dependency. Since we're deploying to Netlify, Netlify needs to have Spike as a dependency of the project in order to compile it. Um, so I'm just going to run npm install Spike and save that as a dependency. Uh, in a new tab, I'm going to get the rest of this set up with GitHub because we all know that npm install takes quite a good bit of time. So I'm going to initialize git here in this repository. Uh, check our status here. We've got a good chunk of files. So I'm going to stage the files. Now we have everything ready to commit. And then git commit the initial commit here. Okay, cool. And it looks like we are clean and ready to go to GitHub. So I'm going to just copy out these two commands. This will add uh, GitHub as our remote origin and just push it to GitHub. Paste those guys in. There we are. And when we refresh this, hopefully we will have our source here. And yes, we do. Cool. 
So everything is looking good so far. Let's check back in this tab. It looks like our npm install did complete. Um, we've got spike in there as a dependency at the latest version, uh, version 11. Perfect. So I'm going to close out this second tab and uh, did modify our package JSON to add the new version. So just a quick commit to add spike as a dependency. Great. Okay. And I'll just push that to GitHub. And we should be clear just to make sure that commit came through. And it did. Cool. So let's go over to Nellify and finish our setup here and get this guy deployed. So I've got my repo on GitHub. And so I'm going to search for spike example. It looks like it's already in there. How uh, convenient. So we're using the master branch. Uh, as we know, public is the directory that the files are built to, so that's what we want to serve up. And we want to run uh, spike compile. We saw spike watch before, which is best used in development when you need to watch your files and reload. However, if you just need to compile the site one time, spike compile will do the trick. If you'd like to have it run the production environment, then we can also do that just to briefly talk about what that is. Um, you saw under the app.js file, we also have app production.js. This is essentially a config file that's merged into app.js and contains any different settings that you want to use just for the production environment. You can have app.anything.js, and if you run it with uh, flag E and that name, it will just take App dot whatever you ran the name in dot js merge that into your normal app js and that will be the result of the compile. So if you have something like needing to minify, needing to compress some images, um, perhaps you have a different URL for your API and development and production, all common use cases. Uh, this is a good use case for a production file, and so that's why this is included here in our default template to make it easy. So I'm going to start building this site. Um, and we will just let this log run and do the full install and build. And when it's ready, we'll be back in just a moment to check the results. Okay, uh, and we're back. It looks like we have finished up with this build of the site uh, and it has been deployed. So let's go ahead and just see what it looks like. And there it is, exactly the same as we expected it to be uh, when we compiled it locally. And so that's the full process. Super, super easy to get everything set up. Uh, exceedingly easy to deploy with Netlify. And now that I've linked it up to, um, now that I've linked it up to GitHub, what happens is that every time that I push uh, any code to master, Netlify will know exactly what's happening and it will pull down the code, it will build it out, and it will deploy that code. So it makes it super easy for me to deploy new changes to this app. Um, and it's a pretty fantastic tool for us. Um, we use it all the time over at Care Creative where I work, and we're definitely going to be sure to uh, promote it as a close partner with the launch of Spike because it just makes everything super easy, super convenient. Um, everything runs extremely fast, especially when you're dealing with a static site. You can see the speed of the static sites paired with Netlify's optimizations is absolutely incredible. Um, so we're super excited about Spike. We're super excited to deploy some of our new Spike sites on Netlify. Thank you for taking the time to watch, and we'll see you next time.